Hello, everyone. Welcome to our panel on the good and the potential bad in AR or augmented reality. My name is Mircea Davidescu. I am a decision science manager at Meta, uh, the company that's focused on the metaverse. You might know us by our previous name, Facebook. We also have a variety of apps, um, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. You might have used a few of them. Um, but today I'm here to discuss with our very exciting panel about augmented reality and its future and applications. As a brief uh, intro, just to the topic to get us all on the same page, augmented reality or AR is essentially at the interface between the real and the virtual world. It's a way for us to project digital uh, images, constructs, objects, videos into the real world um, and in that way, we can enrich our real-world experience. It's a technology still in a fairly early phase, though some of you might remember some of the earlier consumer products around it. Um, there was, for instance, the Google Glass product, which was uh, rather ill-fated, um, but it was nevertheless an attempt at providing a heads-up display of digital content. More recent items around the similar vein of augmented reality include the Ray-Ban Stories uh, items, which were produced in collaboration with Meta as well, and Ray-Bans, and they're available now as well. Um, but as this, ex this technology is still um, in a very early stage, very early in terms of adoption, even earlier, I would say, than virtual reality, which is itself a very nascent early technology, uh, but nevertheless, it is a pivotal technology for the metaverse, especially as we've tried to bring the virtual and the real into a harmony together. And what we're going to talk about then here is, as this technology goes live and as it expands, will it improve our lives? Will it dominate our lives? And how do we make sure we end up on the right side of this balance? Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce our panelists uh, and give them a chance to mention a bit more about themselves, where they come from, and how their expertise relates to augmented reality. And I will start with Bill. Would you, would you mind saying a few more words about yourself? Yeah, thank you very much. It, I'm really glad to be here. I think we have an interesting discussion and an amazing panel today. So I'm glad to be part of it. Uh, my name is Bill Inman. I'm from Los Angeles here in the United States. And um, my background is I run multiple business units at Singularity Net. That's one of the world's most foremost decentralized AI projects. And our mission is to create benevolent or beneficial decentralized AGI, or human level intelligence that nobody owns that's good for humanity. And one of our, uh, our most prominent projects is Sophia the Robot. Uh, you might be familiar with her. She's one of the world's most famous humanoid robots. And we're doing a lot of work, not only in the robotics area, but also in virtual worlds and augmented reality, especially using uh, AI. So glad to bring some expertise from that area and glad to be here. Thank you, Bill. I'll pass it off to Carlos next. So it's a privilege to be here and this amazing panel. Thanks sure that we are going to get out of fun. So my name is Carlos Kuskowski. I worked several years in finance institution internationally, leading innovation and research team. And now I'm trying to be an impact entrepreneur. We have a clear mission that is accelerate the sustainable transformation through new ways of working, exponential technology, creator economy and data. And we are launching different experiments and startups in all these areas. And the one that I think could have most focus is combining quantum web three and sustainable data. Let's see what's happening with metaverse and other reality. Thank you, Carlos. Passing it next to Krenguza. Hello, everybody. I'm um, not coming from the technical world. I'm actually an interface, I would call myself, because I am a law uh, practitioner. Uh, I'm a law professor at the Bucharest University of Economic Studies, uh, teaching law to those that are studying cybernetics and informatics in economy. Uh, I'm also a director of the Swiss Institute for Alternative Thinking, where we are actually working on thinking models and patterns that are helpful to adapt to the new realities. So how we can build that kind of explanation that would help people understand what they are confronted with at the, uh, the current context of various realities uh, moving uh, around us and moving, uh, letting us move 
into, into them. Uh, I'm also a practitioner internationally in dispute resolution, a uh, member of the board of the Silicon Valley Arbitration Mediation Center, where I'm chairing a group where we are trying to understand and work as to how to solve disputes that are happening on the blockchain-based transactions, so basically including smart contracts and automated decisions. So how we solve those disputes, not only disputes between humans, but technology and human uh, combina combinated uh, decisions. Thank you. And now, Michaela, could you say a few words? Yes, uh, definitely. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mihaila Ulieru, I am fundamentally an academic gun entrepreneur, former Canada Research Chair in eSociety, where I experimented with many of these digital platforms, including AR and VR in my uh, adaptive risk management laboratory. But since about 10 years, um, I started advising young entrepreneurs who actually are building these platforms. And uh, one of my first, that was many years ago, though, more than 10 years ago, um, my, my first, my, one of my first master's students was uh, Garrett Camp, who is the co-founder of Uber. So we were, start, um, we were starting from that time to, to experiment and see the good, the bad of such digital platforms. But uh, for the purpose of today's session, I am wearing a special hat, and that is the, as strategic impact leader at uh, Input Output Global, which are the developers of Cardano blockchain. And uh, maybe many of you know, or maybe many of you don't know, that Girolamo Cardano, uh, after whom uh, we inspired the name of the platform, was born in Pavia. So our first metaverse is uh, rightfully called Pavia. You can go to pavia.io. And uh, we already sold 17,000 parcels in the metaverse and are experimenting with uh, four good yes, things in the metaverse, like, for example, Wild Immersion, uh, Charles Hoskinson, who is the founder of Cardano, is playing with crypto bisons uh, just to see how we revive the species and to raise funds for that. And, uh, and reviving, he has a project to revive the mammoth. And uh, in the metaverse, we can experiment how our lives will change if we bring back extinct species. So there are many things which we can do. And I look forward to, to talking to you today about how we can reshape what we value with the help of AR. Yeah, that sounds fascinating. And we're going to certainly get into that. Uh, Rufus, I saw you were able, to, you, you joined us on, on the call, so it's great to have you here. Would you mind introducing yourself a bit and how your work relates to AI? Cool, cool. Uh, some academic background here also, some PhD studies and, and some uh, deep diving into data science, etc. But, but I'm uh, mostly known for, and in that endeavor, I've, I've been writing four books and, and um uh, and I have uh, accused of being a tech influencer with with uh, fifty thousand followers and and uh, the, uh, some hundred articles. But but I'm mostly known, uh, I think, as a serial entrepreneur since my children was born. Uh, more more and more like a social entrepreneur, where I I had did uh, six uh, tech ventures and uh, then did two three okay exits. Uh, and um, and uh, where I did uh, sites with, with a couple of million. Uh, uh, so visitors and some of the biggest uh, apps in the world uh, within its areas, within 10, 50 million uh, users, etc. Uh, and uh, the, the last uh, last couple of years, more and more into, like I said, social impact with with clean tech and uh, and uh, health tech, and and in, in this in the last one, the ed tech. So it's in this area uh, when we talk about emerging technologies and and AR being one of the three biggest, together with AI and blockchain. Uh, I don't think anyone can do a social impact in this world or a business impact without without uh, deep diving into AR. Uh, and within EdTech in, in, in this area, this is uh, not only about being being uh, uh, possible to, to not not only do the cognitive revolution with AI with AI, but also do the the uh, uh, the enhancement of that uh, through AR. That's why our our uh, this this company where I'm, where I'm at the board right now is called AI AR. Uh, IR, uh, so that's that's raison d'être uh, on my interest, and and it's a super interesting area, of course. Excellent. Well, we're very happy to have you here, and actually, what you bring up leads us nicely into our very first question, 
um, which is really about when we talk about augmented reality, we're talking about bringing the digital world into the real world. And the very name augmented reality implies a form of improvement, an augmentation. And the question is, when we are bringing this virtual uh, constructs, objects, world into the real world through AR, are we actually augmenting the real world? Are we displacing the real world? Is it uh, a threat to reality? And I'd like to open this question uh, directed to Mihaela and Carlos, um, but then opening it up to the rest of the panel as well. I think Mihaela, you're on mute. Great. Thank you so much for this. And um, I, I just wanted to jump in because, of course, I've been studying this for years, uh, not only in labs, but also I deployed applications of AR. And we all know now that and we are, are using those as yes, museums. Uh, more recently, though, like in a museum, when you go and, and you can see everything on your phone about uh, uh, the painting or the, the work of art which you are looking at, uh, or you can hear it uh, simply by walking around and, and it just changes automatically. That's an enhancement already. Google Glasses has now um, come up with a translator. So if I speak to a person, uh, let's say a Chinese person, and I don't know the language, then a translation will come automatically in writing in front of my eyes. So it's like real time. That's amazing. Again, uh, augmentation of reality. So the, the question is, uh, as far as I understand, does this new reality, which is enhanced, is, and this enhanced is kind of, you know, uh, assuming that it is positive, yes. So this augmentation, does it improve our life or not? Does it help me to become a best version of myself? And I had experiments, like I can call them wild immersion, which, for example, like we could cure fear of spiders. Yes, with people immersed in a, a, a virtual world in which a spider comes on their hand and, and they, uh, you know, are not afraid. <laughs> Nothing happens as well as, you know, fear of snakes and so on. But what is more important in the context of today's world is... Can we build empathy for animals and reshape the values, as I mentioned in the beginning? For example, can we be immersed in a fisherman's net in which we are caught there, just like so many whales get caught and their babies, and feel what they feel in that situation? Can we um, be immersed in a plastic conundrum in the ocean where um, fish and whale are struggling to survive and feel with them. So hopefully we can build more empathy in the world for the animal world and uh, a desire to build a more sustainable world. So that's why what I would um, call improving our life. I also designed in my lab several experiments, for example, for emergency responders in which we immerse them in, for example, an earthquake situation or a tsunami situation. So they don't have to be there, just like aircraft pilots. Yes, they, they crash in the simulator. So that is also very important for training. So that's, it can enhance, yes, uh, our capabilities in many ways and help us become better at our work as well. Uh, so uh, there's many more. But the other question is, yes, can it be also harmful for us? And just a few very, very short examples. For example, if I am immersed and I see my avatar, a sexy avatar, but then I stay there and look and, and play as an avatar and drinking beer and becoming obese on the couch. I don't think that's good. So there's also this aspect of augmented reality because it kind of takes us, as you mentioned, Mircha, away from the real reality. And uh, so how can we actually keep aware and instead of that, um, choose that avatar to, to train us with a fitness program so that we, we enhance our health? So I think in the end, it comes to our choices. I will have more to say, but I will let the others as well. Yeah, and you bring up a good point before I just jump to Carlos. Um, I think this is a very interesting point about just in general, we use technology and AR is one such technology where we can make our lives easier. We can make our lives more pleasant. Uh, but it also comes at a question of like, are we, by doing so, are we... Um, enriching our lives or are we just avoiding the hard work the hard realities that actually would if we face them it would actually make us 
better people and would make a better world. So I think you bring some very great examples, but I'd love to, yeah, Carlos, would love to get your thoughts as well on this topic. Well, this, this is some, some kind of philosophical question because every time that we read, we are trying to get out of the reality to get immersed in other reality. So this is one thing. And also, I don't know if you can hear me right. Yes, perfect. Also, for, for me, augmented reality is every time that I'm using Google Maps to guide me to one place and I know how much people are there. For me, I have been, I'm having augmented reality, more information about my reality. No? So I think that we are living this now. And I'll let me put two examples about bad things or bad externalities and good externalities because I'm a techno happy, but I think that to try to avoid bad externalities is super important to have clear KPIs and monitoring uh, tools. Uh, so for me to try to measure as we are living now with mobile phones, we move in the five year in the five last year to have close to 100 interaction with our mobile phones to more than 500, and this is not creating more happiness in the people. It's creating more anxiety. So we can recreate the same or going or making harder with augmented reality. But I think that we need to put clear KPIs and clear monitoring system to try to achieve the, the good externalities. Let me put another example that you always, we need some boxes, a place to experiment. More than 10 years ago, we created our first augmented reality application in a bank. The idea is that with your, the first Android, we could see the point of sales and the merchant that allow to pay with the bank credit card. It was amazing, amazing tool, amazing technology, was working really well. I discovered in the moment that this will never work in this moment. When I have a problem with a German father, I was in a park testing the application. Without noticing, I was testing, but the father was thinking that I was watching and um, filming his little kids. It's because, I don't know, just my point, I never imagined this scenario. And in this moment, I realized that the application will never work because the people will think that you are uh, filming and recording people meanwhile you are uh, using augmented reality. So, um, as I was saying, I think that there is amazing uh, functionalities from healthcare, medicine, how a doctor or people with not enough skill could help with the guidance of a machine learning or a real doctor in other part of the world, how I can interact with my friends uh, in around the world in a, in a festival. I can be in a festival, but also with my friends that are not there. And also how I can learn in new in new ways. But I think that probably we are going to continue evolving augmented reality, getting real impact in people's and life and economy in narrow application than having the vision that we have with work last year ago that all the people will have a lens or something contactless to start having this augmented reality. I think that we are probably far, far from them, but not from the technology point of view, mainly maybe for the privacy point of view. So let's see, I think that the opportunities are great and the technology is not good or bad. It's as we all know, how you use it. And one more time, I repeat that I think that we need clear KPIs, a monitoring mechanism, public one and open one, to analyze or to avoid or reduce the bad externalities. Those are great points, Carlos. And I want to touch on one thing that you had mentioned regarding, say, uh, phones and interfaces and AR devices. Um, just because I think what's interesting is when people think about technology, they often think of it in isolation, like, is this technology good or bad? But you can also take a more relativist approach of saying, what would the alternative be? So I know since I was a child, probably even before people were complaining about spending too much time in screens. Now it's too much time on mobile phones. And perhaps like the AR revolution is a way to actually get away from that and get into a world where we are no longer all looking down in our cell phones, but we're looking up at the real world and we can still remain connected and see like our friends and, you know, have the, the utility of our digital devices without being uh, completely sucked in by, uh, by the, the screens. Uh, no, that's, that's, those, those are great points. Um, I want to open up to the rest of the panel as well. If there are thoughts on the, the question about, are we improving reality or are we displacing or threatening reality with this? Okay, and a, a small one, uh, because I, I, like Carlos, I don't think technology is good or bad. There's no value in, in, in technology. It's what we do with it. And and who's hold, holding, it's a hammer. It's a, who's, who, who's holding the hammer and what's the intention behind? So 
And and w- one of those things that you were talking about, Michaela, was uh, one of the most human things we have, and that's empathy. And is this blurring our empathy or not? And you have the possibility to 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 travel to distant to, to see need needy in, in in real life and 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 get tr- truly uh, doing a uh, VR uh, exploration that that goes directly to your heart. But on the other hand, you, ha- you have the possibility to choose what reality you want to see. You no, know? so the racists can put away other people uh, that that they that are of eth- ethical or even color other people that are of other ethics. You no, know? and. And posh people can take away beggars or or any other that that is fil- making their view fil- filthy uh, from their perspective, and that's rather disgusting uh, way, ways of, of of using technology to to make even more selective per- perception than we already have in this bub filter bubble that we have. So it's a, it's really not a deterministic uh, thing, uh, the augmented reality. It's really what we're we're going to do about it, and and we have the power to do it right now, so we should. My very brief contribution, if I may continue your thoughts, uh, uh, would be that uh, they are basically we are speaking about what is that we think and how we behave after we have thought of something. And when about taking decisions, there are actually two elements relevant. First is the input from the reality. And the augmented reality is manipulating the type of input that we, we, we get We have more input nowadays in the form that Mihaela has explained, like, for instance, seeing something we were not able to see before. And that is one type of uh, of, uh, input that is change. And then how we react. And if we only change the sources of information to our senses and we do not change our thinking patterns, no matter what kind of new information we will get, we will still have a problem in processing it in a way to reach to the right conclusions. So I think that we have to attack both levels if we really want to use this technology well, namely to enhance the senses in the sense of uh, new information getting to our senses by video, by by all sorts of other type of uh, information that can be processed uh, through AR, but then also to improve the way in which we integrate that information, in which we take decisions based on that. So we need to have not only alternative realities, but also alternative thinking methods. Right. Yeah. All good points so far. I'll just add one point to this. So uh, AR in the future is almost a necessary tool because of the complexities of technology, converging technology, and just how to operate in this ever, uh, ever changing, ever complex world. So having that information in front of you from doing the simple things like how to, how to keep track of your crypto wallet, from how to operate a drone, right? Where to go. Um, I think it's going to give people who are non-technical a new power to operate in this world that could get left behind. And those that are disenfranchised that don't understand technology, it's going to be right there in front of their face. Now, I don't think that it's going to stop my mom from calling me for tech support, but I still think that it's going to help a lot of people um, in that way. It's going to give them access to understand this new changing world. Yeah, no, good, th- very well put, Bill. Re- really, really, really outstanding points. I, I agree completely. Like, there will be a necessary tech. But now when we talk about the necessity, and you brought up a very good point that brings us to our next question about empowering people, especially people who may have been left behind by prior digital uh, transformations. I guess we can talk a bit about how AR will work in the balance of power between individuals their communities, their governments, their employers, corporations in general. And do we, like, I think there's a a frequent discussion about technology as a democratizing factor. I mean, the internet was to an extent advertised like that. It would be a democratic platform. People could escape publishers. They could create their own websites. Um, Of course, these days, uh, much of the internet is accessed through a handful of domains. It just happens to, <laughs> systems happen to naturally evolve that way in the cumulative advantage. Um, but it's kind of an interesting question about AR. Will the adoption of AR give people more control over uh, what they can access, when they can access it, and, and where? Um, will it give people more control over their education, over um, just their the richness of their experience? Or will it become a tool for um, monopolizing power by governments, by big corporations? Um, How can we 
And how can we use this technology to actually empower people rather than, uh, let's say, uh, disempower them and make them more constrained? So maybe we'll go backwards and we'll start with Bill and then Krenguza and then open it up to the panel. Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a very interesting question. And, you know, at the heart of the blockchain movement is decentralization and decentralizing information, decentralizing power. And it's a, it's a really a philosophical change. So I think that's going to be at the heart. This is, a, this is an interface device. It's a way to take in, ingest information, but also to uh, create information. And I feel like decentralization is going to be key in that. So who has access to the information? Will the individual be able to turn on and off which information is monitored about them? Or will governments have that power? So I feel like it's an, it's a, it's an opportunity. First of all, I think a part of the theme of this conversation is there's been a digital transformations, but we're going to need personal transformations. People are going to have to think differently about how they ingest this information and how they make choices in their life. So access to the information is going to be very empowering for people, but it's also going to be very empowering for people who want to control people. So I feel that decentralization is going to be a very important aspect uh, in this area. And blockchain is very important as a converging technology with AR, NVR, and metaverses. And how that is wielded and what governments do with that, whether they're centralized or decentralized, or whether it's a DAO that is able to send information out via AR to their constituents so that they can do the right thing and act in the right way or vote or vote with what they're doing in their activity. So I believe decentralization is going to play a key role here. Kran Gupta is probably going to have a ton of great thoughts on this. Yeah, I was just going to ask about whether if we will be living in decentralized uh, organizations in the metaverse and through AR and people will have their own laws in micro communities or essentially how, how, who will be in charge and have the power in these, these areas. So we'd love to hear your thoughts, Karen Gutsa. Well, uh, as I mentioned, I'm trying to build thinking models that would help us understand what's happening. And the, the one that I'm using to explain that is the Greek mythology in which we have the pantheon, the level of the gods, and then we have the earth, the Olympus and the earth. What the gods did at that time in the, in the perspective of the Greeks is that they have built the, the world, the earth, in the way they wished. They populated with some beings, the humans, which are independent, but they can be shaped in different ways by the gods, almost like, uh, like I would say, the, the characters that would be totally automated, but uh, of course, somehow controlled by, by the one who, who's doing those or who's building those. And also some space, additional space for the gods to move around. And basically the earth was, uh, for, for the Greeks, a space in which Zeus was coming and having all sorts of affairs here or building stuff or, you know, having all sorts of uh, behaviors that some of them were permitted in the Olympus, some of them were not, like cheating his wife, Hera, or not, you know, on earth. And that was a very interesting uh, layered reality. And I would use this model to explain that basically we are now dealing not with an extension of our reality, but with a layered reality. In the sense that in the existing one, that I would call it the ordinary reality in which we are nowadays, we have one um, set of laws, the laws of nature, the laws of universe that we cannot manipulate or, sh or, or change. And then we have our legal relationships, social relationships, moral relationships, and this we can change. Now, what we are doing with this new reality that we are building, almost like, like the Greek gods were building Earth. Now we are, what we are doing, we are building two types of realities in one. On one hand, we are making the physical laws of the universe. And here we can control some of the behaviors in the sense that, for instance, we can make impossible for somebody to attack somebody else because by the rules, by the programming rules, this would not be permitted in the, in the, in the software. Or we can have a total freedom and everybody could do whatever they want into the, that space. So the first controller of the reality is the builder of the reality. And we can embed physical laws of these new realities as behavioral laws. So some of the territory which here we are trying to enforce, like theft, violence, etc., may be prevented in an augmented reality with technical means. So we can shape the laws of nature, if you want, in this new reality. The second point of control is how you actually, you do not you know, look at the reality as a physical reality, but you look at the behavior of the people and what it is possible and impossible for them from moral point of view, from legal point of view, from decisional point of view. And here we speak about education. 
And here we speak about how we behave because we ourselves, we are uh, programmed mentally to behave in a certain way that is uh, cho chosen by us in total freedom. And I think that this point is often forgotten. How we can and we must keep on being um, um, attentive, be, keep on uh, paying attention to what we are building in terms of our internal rules of behavior in the new realities. And just to finish, one example, very simple one. We are not building something new. I mean, most of the realities are technically new, but socially and philosophically not. When people conquer new territories, the free sea or the free world, by the way, the territories that were, were um, now uh, you know, occupied by, by um, humans entering into a space that was not yet occupied by other humans, there were three moments. Total freedom, collective decision of the communities, more so like those, the, the villages of, of those uh, explorers that were moving in that territory. And third, it was self-regulated uh, area. We call it Lex Mercatoria. Uh, basically, everybody in that industry, like the, the, the ship owners or like the uh, new inhabitants of a territory, were deciding jointly to use as laws in order not to, not to behave improperly. So these three steps, the states are very, very late with their laws and enforcement state mechanisms in the process of regulation. And if we think in this way, then having control, it's reduced to a very simple phrase. The one who convinced me is the one who controls me. Now, the best way is to convince <coughs> myself rather than have other convincing me. But for that, I need to operate with a reality that I understand. Because otherwise, no matter what decision I take, I'm controlled by whoever is presenting me the reality. And my point here is that we need somehow, first of all, to educate people how to behave and understand this shift of realities. And second of all, that we have to pay attention what kind of behaviors we permit in these realities. And maybe we can build a bit better one in which unacceptable behaviors are not technically permitted. Yes, yeah, no, that's and, a great and, point. I, I want to bring up a... I'd like to take on from here, Mirja, if you don't mind, because this is exactly, I think this is a, a critical point, especially <clears throat> with the education, and that is what will make it or break it. I mean, uh, augmented reality can prey on our weaknesses, or instead, it can be used, yes, to prey on our weaknesses, or instead can be used to empower us. And of course, there's more to say on this. I'm not going to tackle it in detail. I just wanted to phrase and to state the problem, which Craig Woods I was talking about. So the problem is not the technology, yes? The problem is that to embed in the structure of the technology, in the fabric of the technology, our unethical behavior. So, uh, and, and, and that is, of course, uh, has many examples have been, uh, have been uh, studied now. I recommend this book, Evil by Design. Also, this one's addictions, machines, the hook model. So we are, this is, you know, uh, the critical point, I think, of the, of the question. So how do we actually transcend that? How do we actually help people become aware that they are being hooked? This is not an easy solution. And of course, the, uh, the United Nations is, uh, is very, very concerned with this. And psychologists, uh, so there are books, uh, psychologists are still studying it. It is not solved. Yes, we, we have many of us already addicted to video games. But how about when we will be immersed in, in this universe, which is so amazing? Look at what platforms are doing. So opt in, don't opt out. <laughs> Don't not opt in. So this is these are the only choices which are given to us. So it's very important to become aware and actually do nothing uh, uh, when it comes to that. So the question is, can we actually increase our awareness? Can we use AR to increase our awareness instead of decrease it and hook us? Can we use that to help us? behave ethically in, unfortunately, yeah, because coming back to your question about reality, it is mo mostly an unethical world and it's not an easy battle. Yes. So anyway, I can say a lot more, but um, thank you, Kranguza. This was a critical point, which, uh, uh, and thank you for allowing me to share my screen as well. I, you really triggered me on this one. <laughs> so.
Yeah. So no, we can. We, I'd love to hear a bit more from the from the other panelists about. I think it's a great point that we have uh, empowerment is also about educating on usage and being able to uh, understand how technology aids us or manipulates us. And I'd love to hear maybe from like some uh, serial entrepreneurs like Rufus, what are your thoughts regarding how users themselves can, like rather than wait to be given the power, can empower themselves uh, and, you know, make, make sure that they are in a good position when they interact with these technologies like augmented reality. Uh, thank you. That's uh, it's it's that's the really really nice uh, subject, though, no? and that's uh, that's about how how we should not use technology to repair old processes, uh, but actually innovate new and totally new ones, no. And then we think it re can rethink society, like like uh, uh, when Elon Musk is going up to Mars with his uh, starships. Uh, the, 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 no, nobody knows who's going to be the governor there, who's going to be the president. So we have the possibility to rethink society, and it's the same within the metaverses or the multiple metaverses that, that that we have, and all the AR applications that are there. So, so there, there are multiple of these, and they, but but that's that's a, a ten ten hour show. No, uh, when we're going to talk about how it's possible to use use AR when when you when you uh, when you are a doctor and 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 you're you're, you're you're curing your patient when when you have when you're looking for your loved ones. Uh, and and uh, see the connections all all around uh, all around you where where you see where uh, the possibility to to uh, to to take this uh, all these these things that are are truly mixed reality uh, and you forget about people who are you who is this this fantastic woman that I'm seeing ah it's Mich Michaela that I, I met at the the Horasis with, with the fa fantastic blockchain beauty <laughs> and that etc etc so and and you're sitting at dates and you can go to into Insta okay she likes uh, talking about the cats let's talk about cats whatever so there's a lot of these things and and you look at your plate and and you automatically you see how many calories there are on your plate because it's automatically be mm -hmm. by AI is going to be, be calculated. And th there's a lot of these uh, truly day-to-day -day, uh, things that will be, be magical, no? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the true breakthrough will not be when we, when we only have the, the, the AR glasses or the AR lenses that will monitor the outer world, uh, but it's when, when it actually uh, also monitor the inner world. And there has been some fantastic things there where, where I, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you know about them, where, where you can actually do the emotional tracking uh, and see about my feelings. So I can, and then we have the AI, the super intelligence of AI that can match my feelings with the outer world. So that's that's the true connections, no? So all the things I thought I, I liked that that person, but in truly I liked that person. I thought I liked this food, but it was this food. I thought I, I was I was uh, loving these uh, to go be out in the nature, but no, I liked uh, watching these horror movies instead. So all these <laughs> things that that is is showing you your true self and getting getting to know your your true identity identity and also making your consumption uh, which can be commercially exploited etc if you're a business person but also can be be making you yourself yourself becoming a, a more happier person all this matching is, 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 is that's a tr true paradise uh, where you're using technology in, in the right version the 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 thing that might not be as positive is, th is that we are in, in doing this. It will be so wonderful in, in this paradise. But, uh, we become even more and more remote species. Uh, we usually, uh, before we met friends at the cafes, now we're doing, doing it social media. Before we were shopping in the malls, now we're shopping in the MCOM. Before we were doing the, the banking, me me meeting people, now we're doing using fintech. That would be even more like that when we have this fantastic, and which has been triggered by the pandemic, of course. Uh, so the metaverse and, and, and the AR applications will trigger this to us becoming even more remote uh, from other people uh, in one way, but on the other way, we will be even closer. So this is a really, really uh, a Janus uh, phase that, that uh, where there, there are both sides of, of all of these uh, hammers of technology. Yeah. No, that's fair. And you can just look at where we are now and whether it's an improvement that we are able to have this panel at all or is it a detriment that we cannot have it in person? Uh, Carlos, I want to give you two minutes to round us out on this question before. Perfect. No, the last part is what you are saying. The technology is allowing us to work remotely. That is a big benefit because we also are a remote, comp remote, comp remote working company, but I'm spending a lot of time in Canary Island. That is one of the remote working hubs in Europe. And it's amazing how new communities, new, con new connection, new relation is being created every day with a coffee, a 
close to the sea, creating projects together. So I think that in this case, these new communities in, in amazing uh, hubs will, will also be created. About the technology, I think one more time, the technology is there and could create asymmetries. But I think that we need to keep it as open as possible and to figure out incentives like play to earn and all that are trying to create is uh, learn to earn. So I think that we need to incentivize people to, uh, to learn new things. Completely agree. I, I wish you were sharing more of your wonderful background there in the Canary Islands, but uh, maybe an another time. Um, in the last five minutes, uh, I would love to just maybe round out with the, the panel on closing thoughts uh, in particular. Just are you excited or worried about this new AR technology and maybe one or two sentences why? Um, and we can start again, like uh, we'll, we'll go We'll go in reverse order. So we'll start with you, Carlos. One minute. <laughs> As I was saying, I'm a techno happy, but also realist. So I think that the technology is creating a really good impact in the society, but all we need to have, and it's my proposal, open mechanism to measure the, the good impact and the impact so we could, could be clear. Rufus, what? Uh, you're on mute, Rufus. Rufus, sorry. I think the blue pill of, of metaverse is, is going to be a, a fantastic one, uh, and I think it's going to be a uh, it's going to be costly one because some of these uh, beauty surgery uh, that we are doing offline uh, will be much uh, and all the makeup we spend and all the clothes and all the status things it will be costly online, but it will be be at least be cheaper than an offline or and and we not as irreversible. Uh, and, and I think the augmentation of all the things that we're going to do, it's going to be totally amazing. But I think it's, it's us, we right now, we have the possibility to choose the direction because there are other things that are not as good. Uh, and we have good thinkers uh, in the world that are, that are looking at the mitigating those risks within AI. We don't have as, as much uh, notabilities that are, are looking up for this uh, regarding when it comes to AR. So I really think we, we should have a two-dimensional uh, view here. Yes. Well, the the scary part to me, it's a saying that uh, reads as as follows: People are not addicted to alcohol or drugs; they are addicted to escaping reality. So basically, if we accept the new reality as a territory in which we enter consciously either to play or to work or to socialize or any other legitimate reason that we take consciously, then I think we are going to be fine because we are going to learn how to behave in this new territory. As long as we do not do it consciously and we do it exactly as a drop of expect, uh, uh, escaping this reality, then we are going to be in trouble. Bill, thoughts on that? <laughs> Yeah, well, I think that augmented reality as a whole provides a tremendous opportunity for all of us and, and, and society in general, because we're going to need to create these new worlds. And what you're seeing in the NFT movement is human beings creating, which it does better than machines today, at least to humans liking, right, to our own taste, we create well. And NFTs represent this opportunity to create something new in the digital world. We're going to have to dictate and define what augmented reality is, what virtual reality is. And I think it's a tremendous opportunity for so many people out there who are going to be disenfranchised by AI. Up to 800 million jobs will be displaced by 2030 by AI. Well, they can go to become a creator. Millennials want to be YouTubers today. I think you're going to see a lot of young people want to become AR creators and create that look of the world, that visual of the world. So on the positive front, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for the individual to really take advantage of that have their own personal transformation and, and make their life better. And rounding us off, Michaela. Yeah, so um, I would close with, you know, um, this thought, responsibility. And there's responsibility is twofold. So it has two aspects. One, the responsibility and accountability of the technology designers. I was asked in one interview many years ago when I was, you know, researching such platforms and, and they were just incipient. Facebook just started then. 
well, are you the god of your um, agents, of these avatars, of, uh, of, of what's happening in the metaverse? So then I realized how much power, actually, uh, the designers of technology have, and uh, which I underlined also before. And uh, just to give you this uh, uh, example from Cardano, we have a project called Project Catalyst in which we are experimenting with the rules of the game, just as Rufus was mentioning on Mars, now we do that in the metaverse. So the rules of the game in uh, governance by the people, for the people and in a better way, uh, this has, of course, also <laughs> many aspects and it can become a conundrum because it's again falls back into the second responsibility, which is personal responsibility, how we use the technology. And I think this, you know, can be, cannot be understated because do I have the courage to really look at my true self, as was mentioned here, or I just like to be, you know, in the metaverse and believe that I am that sexy avatar? Do I really want to make a conscious choice and the effort to transcend my limitations and really use this amazing instrument that is being created to become the better version of myself and enable my fellow human beings do that? on this planet. So these are, you know, rather than blaming the technology and the platforms, we have to empower ourselves and make this conscious choice. Otherwise, the avatars, the AI, the robots, and there's this term, Krenguza, legal personality, so they will start to have rights just like us, are going to take over, especially if they are designed in a certain way or another, and we do not want that to happen. Beautiful, beautiful words to close us out. Um, once again, I see we're slightly over time, but I wanted to thank our entire panel. So it's been a very spirited, very enlightening discussion. Um, again, I'd like to close with just the thoughts that we are the masters of technology, not the reverse, and we still have the power to shape our future in AR and thereby make it better. Um, and I'm looking to this panel with great excitement as part of that journey to, to building this new exciting world. So thank you to all of you for joining today. Thank you to all of our listeners. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what, what's happening in this space in the future. And thank you, Mircha, for a thank wonderful you. moderation. Super good. Yes. Great job. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, you everybody. Have to, See to you guys. press the button, Mircha, just to um, stop the recording. <laughs>